And then we'll have a song that was selected by Chuck's dad, Charlie, because it's a song that typifies Chuck. It's always be humble and kind. That could be Chuck's anthem, I think. Charlie asked us to listen to the words because they describe Chuck to a T and what Chuck would want from us and what we're going to try to do this afternoon. So I hope you listen to the words and enjoy and feed your soul. Let's pray. Dear Lord and Father, we give you praise and thanks for another day of life. We thank you for giving us such a good friend as Chuck. We thank you for the great memories that we get to celebrate today. We thank you for the friendships that are in this room, the relationships that are renewed and restored and rekindled. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to celebrate and the place to do it. And Lord God, we pray that you give us the strength that we need <clears throat> as we don't just celebrate, celebrate but we grieve. Help us as our hearts are heavy. Please give us the comfort that only you provide. Bless us in this time. Through Jesus we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you. 
where you go and don't forget to turn back around and help the next one in the line always stay humble and kind
to where we can talk and tell stories of each other. Thank you. <coughs>
Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art.
Chuck was a huge Dukes of Hazard fan, and who knew that one day Bo Duke would be in Chuck's hospice room. Helping to give him a great send off. I hope you realized how much you meant to all of us. Have fun in Hillbilly Heaven, Chuck. And we'll see you again someday, my friend. Keith Bilbrey. Thank you, Mr. Dolphin, for requesting that I say a few words and I pray for you and your family, your peace and comfort, and knowing Chuck is home. Healed and walk in in heaven. Thank you. It's my honor to be here today. Chuck's life was filled with hope and passion, promise, and love. And what an honor it's, it has been to be loved by Chuck Dolphin. Raise your hand if you felt loved by Chuck. Chuck. And he loved. I'm Marcia Campbell. Host of 6:50 a.m. WSM all nighter. Chuck Dolphin and I we grew up together riding school bus number 51. Randy Till, our bus driver, second and third grade, fourth and fifth, right next door, taking you way back. <laughs> Burns Elementary School days. Our friendship grew and lasted all these years. In the early 90s, I called my hometown radio station, WDKN, about hosting a bluegrass radio show. I arrived to meet with the program director of the station. And there was my friend, Chuck Dalton, happy and excited to hear my ideas. Well, he put me on the air the next week. I did not know anything about radio show prep. I didn't know anything about running the board, turning knobs, pushing buttons. I didn't know any of that. He said, I'll run the board for you. You do the show. He believed in me, and he cheered me on. A couple of years later, he filled me asked me to co-host a nationally syndicated radio show, IRN, Interstate Radio Network. I worked my way to a program director position and was needing a weekend personality. I had the privilege of them returning the favor and hiring Chuck to work on air. On the weekends, while he was doing the morning show and other duties at WDKN, if you stop and think about it, he was on air six days a week. He was working constantly, doing radio. At IRN, we had many stations carrying the program all across the country. But there was this one special affiliate one station, home of the Grand Ole Opry, the Air Castle of the South, 6.50 a.m. WSM. A perfect match. Chuck Dolphin and WSM. Chuck said the call letters with pride every hour. He was supposed to mention all of the stations, give everybody the same attention and love. WSM got love every hour. He knew the artists, the songs, the people that wrote the songs, and he knew the chart success. After IRN consolidated, WDKN sold, by the grace of God, Chuck and I managed to stay in the business we love so much. Chuck loved his family, friends, music, the songwriters, the artists, and made best friends in the music industry. If you know Chuck, you know, he loved the Dallas Cowboys and the Dukes of Hazards. Hazards. <laughs> he loved pretty girls. <laughs> we had lots of conversations. This Leah Womack, Patty Loveless. If there was a pretty girl, we were talking about her. <laughs> he loved his cats, Diet Coke, Diet Cherry. It was a favorite. And Doritos. Oh, I bet I, I carried 10 pounds of Doritos to the hospitals. <laughs> Whether he was writing about music or making artists look like big stars or doing an on-air country music show or calling sports play-by-play, -play, he did his job with passion. And he fought hard through all of his struggles and illness to live. Just to live. Anchor. 
encourage you to join us at the reception following today's service because there are stories to tell. Brian Baker, you have some great swap and shop stories that must be shared. And I think it's important for you to know, Mr. Dolphin mentioned this a little bit earlier and so did Matthew. When he first became ill, he and his father made preparations for today, his going home celebration. And as I was listening to the songs Chuck requested to be played, getting the music ready, I wanted you to know Chuck has given us a gift, a message of hope and faith through songs. Music is a great healing healer. It has great healing powers and it brings a sense of peace. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. And grace will lead us home. <laughs> Chuck is home. I can only imagine what he is seeing and who he is talking with in heaven. Raise your hand if you have thought. I wonder who Chuck's talking to. I wonder who Chuck's interviewing. It's the truth. It's the truth. And he loved people. Will the circle be unbroken? There's a better home awaiting in the sky. Lord in the sky. Don't take for granted the love this life gives you. Help the next one in line. Always stay humble and kind. Mr. Mr. Dolphin was a perfect song. Thank you. I believe in music. I believe in love. Music is love. Love is music. If you know what I mean, people who believe in music are the happiest people I've ever seen. Not only was it a family of friends, but it was a music family as well that Chuck was loved by. As the rain falls, it will quench your tired soul. Wear the sun in your heart. Live in free and harmony and majesty. Wear the sun in your heart. So when you hear these songs again, think of Chuck, his life and legacy, his faith, his kindness. When you leave here today, be more like Chuck. Show grace to others. Be humble and kind. Believe in music and believe in love. Live free in harmony and majesty. And live your life with passion. Chuck gave me my career. And for that, I will forever be grateful. But he showed all of us how to be a friend and how to love unconditionally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Adios, amigos. Adios, my dear sweet friend. Thank you.
I have been a Baptist preacher for 37 years. I'm just going to let that sink in. <laughs> Church I pastored, Chuck was always welcome. 
and he was gone. And any time Chuck came to uh, one of my services, he would come in and sit down. He knew what was about to happen. I would say, folks, I want you to know we have the Church of Christ. <laughs> And I said, now after church, you can go up and touch him. <laughs> he loved it. And I said, I said, church, where is the pen? Oh. <laughs> I would say, Chuck, that's a pen. <laughs> and you can come up and you can come up and touch the pen. And do that just for meanness. He, <laughs> he loved it. He'd go, ooh. <laughs> that, that's a piano. That's a piano. Oh, okay. Okay. We, we just had fun like it all the time. But he loved my family. I love his family. And I have a scripture for you, and I will not take uh, much longer. In Psalm chapter 27, it says this, iron sharpeneth iron, so a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. For iron to sharpen iron, there's got to be two pieces of iron. Friction will shape those pieces of iron or will sharpen those pieces of iron. I had my family at the Cracker Barrel. I believe it was Friday night. And I told my wife, Miss Diddy. Uh, Chuck always called her Miss Diddy. I said, there's got to be a table here that Chuck off in my memorial table. Because Chuck and I would go out there and I would say, Chuck, I don't have any money. And he'd say, Donnie Craig before that. I said, all I got is the milk money for the baby. That's all I got. Our kids were grown. <laughs> <laughs> I said, or I might have my tie. But you know I can't get my tie. I can't spend my tie. Donnie Craig, don't you worry about it. I got it. I got it. And then he would get these gold count cards. He would interview people. And he would get a gold card. And we parked them things up. <laughs> Chuck and I would get together and we would talk. And we would laugh. There was a few oof and ooh. And uh, we did all that. And then he would cry. Then maybe I'd cry. But we'd laugh. We we sharpened each other. We will owe that kind of friend. And I'll close with this. Miss David and I have been watching uh, Ken Burns' country music. We've been watching that and we've been enjoying that. Chuck Dolphin came to West Tennessee and he and I went to see where Patsy Klein playing praise. It's there in Camden between Hollow Rock and Camden is where it was. And Chuck and I went and we saw that. He, that was really something he wanted to see. So we we watched Ken Burns, we watched Patsy Klein and what they had to say about her. And I said, Miss Divya, up in heaven, Chuck Dolphin is talking to Patsy Klein. I've interviewed her, talking to her. And I said, no. He's still hugging his mom. 
boy took off and loved his mom. And I don't know many of you unkind about that because if you talk and speak of a mother's love, you could never be unkind. Amen. <laughs>
more time, he would have tried to make friends with a priest and a rabbi. <laughs> this sounds like something he would have done. But we would have had to have the funeral in the bar, and that might have been too much. <laughs>
She called at him and said, show me the magazine, and I think she was relieved and surprised when it was Billboard. <laughs> For the boy who in eighth grade is smuggling Billboard magazines in school, to be the man who wrote more than 1,600 articles for Billboard, that's a cool story. That's dreams come true, I think. I still don't know that I think Chuck believed that that happened. I don't know. And I may get too personal here, and forgive me if I do. I think Chuck always struggled a little bit, feeling like he didn't measure up to this world that he was in. He saw the stars that shine so bright, and he just didn't know exactly how he fit. I think sometimes he felt like an outsider. I think sometimes he felt like a nobody. But Chuck never forgot anybody. He remembered the acts of kindness that people showed him. He remembered when he was a sophomore in high school. Here in Dixon, one of his teachers gave him an assignment where they had to write a letter to someone whose job they wanted. So he wrote to Joe Galanti, president of RCA. <laughs> he didn't expect much of a response, maybe a form letter, I think. But one day in the mail, there was one of those big old manila envelopes stuffed, not only with a letter that answered every single question he asked, but cassettes from projects the label was working on. He mentioned Alabama or and a bunch of other people that I'm too dumb to know who they were. <laughs> on his blog, Chuck talked about how for years he would see Joe on dance, but he was afraid to thank him for that act of kindness because he didn't feel like he could talk to somebody like that. Joe was, uh, Chuck was humble, almost to a fault at times. I think Chuck did struggle with that. I think he couldn't comprehend that a guy from Dixon, Tennessee, who wasn't formally trained, who didn't have all of this education or all of these connections, he worked so hard in his career, I think because he wanted to prove that he was somebody. I think that's why that CMA award was so important to him. It was validation that what he spent his life working on had really amounted to something. I don't know how things work when you die. I don't know about the afterlife. I leave that hard stuff to the Baptists. But if <laughs> Somebody who was crazy 
and he didn't miss a beat. And he acted like it was perfectly normal to trade three chickens for you know, uh, whatever it was that came on the show. I loved it. Everybody was somebody to Chuck. Every single one of you had to look on your face that says Chuck was your friend. I think he had an inside joke with every person in this room, would be my guess. It would be really fun if we had a big whiteboard and we could write down what all those things meant and what all those things said. Whenever I called him, he would say, how's it going, Rabbi? And I'd say, it's the wrong religion, Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> Evidently, I wasn't a real good preacher. I couldn't even convince him which religion he was. He wasn't just a friend. He was a loyal friend. I suspect Chuck could have made more money or had an easier life if he had career hopped. Uh, or if he'd taken more opportunities, but Chuck was loyal, and he was content with what he had. He was loyal to the Dallas Cowboys. Have <laughs> 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 we checked our phones today to see how they're doing? <laughs> 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 okay. I see thumbs up. Uh, somebody said that the Cowboys were supposed to be his pallbearers so they could let him down one last time, but we're not going. <laughs>
I need to wrap this up. I've said too much already. Chuck was somebody special because he made everybody feel like somebody special. His struggles with feeling like he was a nobody breaking my heart. His struggles with depression and his health were miserable, frankly. But I loved that even when things were really, really hard, Chuck looked for the good, and Chuck made you feel special. Sometimes I think Chuck's life might have been a country song. He didn't catch a lot of breaks. When he lost his mom, that was tough. The accident a couple of years ago, the fall, there's a lot of things that made life hard for Chuck. But Chuck just kept on being Chuck. And Chuck showed us the path to being somebody. He isn't getting your bylaw on 1600 articles or getting on board. It's by making other people somebody's. And that's what he did his entire life. I too will close with one passage of scripture. Mine was longer than the Baptist, so keep that in mind. <laughs> it's Philippians 2, 4 to 7. It is a passage about being humble and kind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not out only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, and though he was in the form of God, did not count emptied himself, he took the form of a servant, born in the likeness of men. Chuck reminds me of that. He wasn't fancy, he wasn't sophisticated, he was humble, he was loving, he was kind. And I don't know about you, but I think the world needs more Chucks. I can't bring Chuck back, but to honor him, I can try to be a little more like him. I want to challenge you to do that. Be somebody who makes everybody else somebody, whether they're a nobody or not. Thank you to those of you who loved him. Thank you for supporting him, for cleaning his house, for taking care of his cats, paying medical bills, for smuggling him in food he wasn't supposed to eat, for 20 pounds of Doritos. How many bags is that? <laughs> it's like a tractor trailer. <laughs> thank you for supporting him. Father, thank you for Chuck. Thank you for a life well lived. Thank you for his friends, his music, his family. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You know we're sad, but we're glad when you are. And we look forward to seeing you again one day. In Christ we pray. Amen.
Thank you so much for being here. You are dismissed to play this song. Thank you.